In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into the sixth diminished scale for jazz piano. It's a great scale. There's a lot of usages for it, mostly comping and playing melodies with different voicings. So it's basically ways to put chord voicings together. And it's also a great arranging technique. And we're gonna take a look at the origins of the sixth diminished scale. Then we're gonna look at the alternate diminished scales and then finally, we're gonna apply this entire concept to arranging and chord voicings for a tune called Blue Bossa, which is essentially a famous bossa nova. All right, let's dive in and get started. Taking a look at the major sixth diminished scale, it's just a major scale with one note difference. You add an A flat, so instead of major scale, it's got a flat six in there. Now, some people might call this a bebop scale, but the difference between a bebop scale and a major six diminished scale is worlds apart because the major six diminished applies to more of a arranging technique and a voicing technique than just a scale. So the differences are definitely vast. And you're gonna wanna learn this because you can apply this a lot to the piano. It makes really, really nice voicings and good arranging. So where did it come from? Well, it essentially came from two things. First of all, the fact that it comes from a major sixth chord, and second of all, from a diminished chord. So it's not a major sixth diminished because the sixth is flat, it's because it's two chords, a major sixth and a diminished chord. And the first one is major six here. So just a major chord with an added sixth. And then the next chord is built on the seventh. So for example, the major seventh of a C scale is a B natural. And that's where the diminished chord comes from. Here, B diminished seventh. Now, the reason why that is, and it's built on the seventh, is because that note, the bottom note, the seventh, is also the third of a dominant seventh chord. So if the dominant seventh of C6 is G7, the third of G7, which is a leading tone, is the B natural. If you add a flat nine to that, you get a B diminished seventh chord. So G7 flat nine, B diminished seventh are the same. One just has the root G and the other one does not. So you can think of this as five of one. So when it comes to chord voicings and creating a scale out of this using those voicings, you can think of it like a C sixth with all of its inversions. And then a D diminished seventh or B diminished seventh, which is the same, and its inversions. The only reason we're thinking of it like D diminished seventh instead of B is because it's the second note of the scale. So first note of the scale and its inversions. Second note of the scale and its inversions. And when you put them together, you get this scale. And I'm referring, of course, to this scale here that you see Now, obviously I haven't written in the last chord here, but it just reverts back to C6. So again, it's like C6, dominant seventh, C6, dominant seventh. So every other chord is like a cadence resolving to one, five to one, five to one. Now in and of itself, that's a really cool idea. When it comes to playing piano voicings then, Barry Harris discovered that you can start to do things like drop two, drop three, and drop two and four voicings. So what does that mean and how does it work? Well, if you think about the top note of any of these voicings as one, and the next note as two, and the next note as three, and the next note as four, you can drop two down an octave. So that would mean taking this G natural and putting it down an octave to here. Alternatively, if you dropped the third note, you would take the E natural and throw it down to the bass. And then finally, you would take the lower note, which is drop four, and put it down an octave. Now, typically you don't do that because it's already the bottom of the chord. 
but you can do drop two and drop four, which means taking the second note and the fourth note and dropping them down into the bass. So just to compare the different voicings, let's play the root voicing. And then we're gonna drop the second note, which is the G down to the bass and play a drop two voicing. You can already hear with your ears that it's starting to get a little bit more interesting. Then if you drop three, which is the E natural down to the bass, you get this scale. And then finally, dropping two and four, you would take the G and the C and put them down lower. And you get this. Much more open sound because of course, now the chord is spread out quite a bit between the two hands. So this is a great idea when it comes to playing different types of chord voicings with tunes. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the other diminished scales. So there's more than just the major sixth diminished scale, there's also the minor sixth diminished. And just like building the chord from a major sixth diminished, you're gonna take the chord, which is first described here, the minor sixth chord, and then you're gonna add the diminished chord by starting on the major seventh of the scale. So the major seventh of a C minor scale is B natural, same as the major chord. So then you get a C minor sixth chord and its inversions, and a B diminished seventh and its inversions. And the scale that comes out of those two chords is this. One more time. Interesting scale. And then of course, when you play the chords over top of that, We'll do a little bit more on that one later, but let's move on to the dominant seventh diminished, which is the next one. So you've got a dominant seventh chord and a diminished scale built from the major seventh. So a C7 chord and a B diminished seventh chord. And this is the scale that you get. Now, if I were to explain that a little bit more clearly, every other note creates the first chord and then the second chord is created by these notes. So again, every other note is either the dominant seventh chord or the diminished chord. And then finally, you have the dominant seventh flat five diminished scale built from the dominant seventh flat five, which is this, and the diminished scale, which is this. So the scale you get is this one. The chords that are built on that are of course, the C half diminished seventh chord, and then the B diminished seventh chord as you go up the scale. Same thing that we did with the major sixth diminished and the minor sixth diminished. So let's review again the minor sixth diminished scale. And the reason why we're reviewing that is because we're gonna apply that to the tune Blue Bossa which just happens to be the first chord, a C minor sixth chord. And we're gonna apply the C minor sixth diminished scale to this melody. So if you're not familiar with blue bossa, it's basically this. It's a nice tune, you don't really need to reharmonize that or anything, but what's nice about it is it lends itself really well to the sixth diminished scale or the C minor sixth diminished scale. So if we were to analyze this bit by bit, and I need to take a quick screenshot here, you would first get the C minor sixth chord. And what we're doing in this particular case, when you wanna get the left hand involved, we're just playing it in root position here, but we're adding the melody note to the left hand. So instead of 
get this. Really nice sounding voicings. So again, you've got the C minor six chord, then you've got your B diminished seventh, then you've got your C minor six chord, and then you've got your B diminished seventh, and then finally you've got your C minor six chord. Now, of course, these are different inversions of each other, but it's just going down the scale. And then when we get to here, we're changing to the F minor sixth diminished scale. So if you look at the major seventh of an F minor six, it's of course E natural. And then you would get your E diminished seventh chord. So that's what this chord is. This is an E diminished seventh chord. It's just an inversion starting on the C sharp. And then this is also an E diminished seventh chord. It's just starting on the lowest note, which is B flat. And then we're moving to the F minor sixth chord here at the end. So let's play the whole line now with all of those voicings. Starts to sound really rich and full and they work great with the bass player. Let's move on to the next line and we've got a D minor seven flat five diminished scale. Now the problem here is the melody doesn't really lend itself well to playing every other chord as a diminished chord. So I did a little bit of thinking on this and what we came up with was a D half diminished seventh chord here, which is and then when we get to the E flat, it can't really use a diminished chord. It just doesn't sound right. So just. So these are all D half diminished seventh chords here. Okay. And then this one is just a nice chord that I threw in, which is just a G seven flat nine chord. And then you get back to the diminished scale or the C minor sixth diminished scale. And you've got your B diminished seventh and then B diminished seventh back to C minor sixth. So let's play the whole tune now. Okay, so there's some information about the sixth diminished scale that I hope you find useful. It's definitely useful when playing chord voicings and doing arranging. If you have any questions about what we've talked about here, you can certainly ask them in the comments below. As far as this sheet music is concerned that I created, I'm gonna give it to you. Just all you have to do is go to the link up here in the corner and download it. It's absolutely free to do so. And you can practice your sixth diminished scales. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, we'd love to have you. Just hit the little bell when you do because you'll be notified of the upcoming videos that we're making. And if you like this particular video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much for your time. I'll see you in the next video.